command flags or options are characters we can add onto a command to have it perform advanced or more specified nuances of what it normally does. In other words, these flags modify the command to do something new. And so we keep saying the word command. These commands that we're running like who am I and such are actually just executable binary files. And sometimes we might refer to these as a binary or binaries. So let's jump in and take a look at the man pages for LS. So looking through the man page, we can see something over here like that little hyphen A. And really that's called TAC A. Now the TAC portion comes from early telegraphy and radio communication days where messages were encoded using sequences of dots and dashes. And this shorthand of TAC, which looks like a hyphen in normal language, is how we add a flag to the LS command. In this case, TAC A will give us all the listings and it will not ignore entries starting with a dot. Let's keep going. We can find another one of TAC H to make it human readable. And note that it says it has to be combined with TAC L. And this is because it prints sizes, but then makes it human readable. And this is the convention, TAC something. So if we want to actually search the man page to make our life easier, we can actually search for those tacks. And in order to do a search inside of the man page, we just have to start hitting the forward slash key on our keyboard. So forward slash, and then say tack L. If we hit enter now, it's actually gonna give us all of the entries it can find for tack L. And this will help us search for things, and it's generally intuitive, tack L for long, or tack A for all, tack H for human readable. It's meant to be somewhat similar between all of the commands. Now go ahead and try searching for tack L, but add a space at the end. And the results are going to be a little bit different this time. You see, it's trying to match the exact pattern. So anything with a tack L and a space is what it will deliver to you. And sometimes that convention works. So we can look for a tack letter and tack letter space and tack letter comma even as another convention. So try that and start getting used to looking out for the ways that documentation is formatted. And I should mention that if you'd like to go ahead and kind of search through your results, you can hit lowercase n on your keyboard to go to the next occurrence and then hold shift to capitalize it. So capital N will take you back. So lowercase n to go ahead, capital N to find the previous occurrence. Finally, you can hit Q once you're ready and we can exit the man page. So let's actually use one of these flags now. We'll run a simple ls command first, and then afterwards we're gonna run an ls space tack a. Now look at that output difference. We can finally see folders and files that begin with a dot, and those are hidden folders and files inside of Linux. And that's what the tack a flag allows us to look for. Now let's run tack al. And now let's go and expand the terminal to get more visibility in what's going on. We've actually combined two flags here, tack A and tack L into one. Now we can see all of those folders and files that begin with a dot. We actually get a full listing of permissions as well too. Those little RWX and such, we get file and folder sizes and timestamps. And that's what that tack L listing does. We'll get into permissions a little bit more, but for now just consider when you see a D in the front like that, that means a directory or folder. If it's missing it, it's a file. And we can see that 4096, well, that's the space on disk. And if we use attack H now, that 4096 actually is a little bit easier to read as four kilobytes instead of 4096 bytes. So as you can see, these flags actually add in a lot more functionality. Okay, so let's go and clear the terminal now, and I'm actually gonna hit Control L, and that's gonna clear my screen. And that's actually a shortcut instead of typing clear. Knowing which flags to use for which intention, that'll come in time. So let's go ahead now and look into something called tab auto completion and get a sense of directory paths. So let's go and run an ls tack al once again, just to demonstrate this tab auto completion. We can actually give it a folder or file and we can start typing the characters to what we want to get a full listing for. Now notice that I've typed for. Now nothing in this folder begins with for, but that's the point. Because if I try to hit the tab key right now, nothing is gonna happen. And now if I instead change that to fir and I hit tab, it auto completes for me. 
Okay, so that's a new concept. Let's try that one more time and start typing FIR and hit tab. And again, it auto completes for us. I cannot stress enough how important this tab auto completion function is. This is going to save you a ton of time if you make typos, if you're trying to look for something that doesn't exist, it just simply won't populate for you. So when in doubt, always try to use tab autocomplete when you're typing out your commands and Linux will do its best guess at providing you the next output or next command that you can run if it's valid. If you're not getting anything, then you're probably doing something wrong. Let that be a cue. And there's multiple ways we can refer to something. And I'm going to do that right now, putting a dot and a forward slash hitting tab. Note that it's giving me options of what I can choose. And if I keep hitting tab, I'll keep getting these two options until I narrow down the possibilities to one. I can do that by hitting WN and then tab. It will populate with downloads because that's the only combination left. Okay, so why did that work? And how did it know how to populate downloads? Well, that dot is representative of here. Like when we ran print working directory, it's like saying from your current working directory, what are the possible combinations now based on what you've typed? So just remember that that dot is always representative of where you currently are. And then that forward slash just allows you to begin from the current listings of that directory. So just side by side comparison, you can reference your current directory listings of items by putting the dot forward slash or just start spelling out what's inside of the folder and it will automatically populate for you. Okay, so with that being said, if we wanted to list the contents of another folder from our relative directory, we can start typing it and hit tab, and notice how it's going to append a little forward slash at the end. The forward slash gets appended to the end of what it automatically completed for you, because it's assuming that you want to look with inside of it, and there has to be some type of character to represent that you want to look inside of it, and we do that with the forward slash. So let's continue working with directory paths. Let's make a folder and then work around it. We can do that with the mkdir or make directory command and then just give it a folder name. And again, if we're not sure, we can always run the man command and look inside of it, especially if we're trying to make multiple folders at the same time. Maybe we want to use that tag p option where it's not going to give us an error if the parent folder doesn't exist. Okay, cool. So let's cd into it. And we can specify again with a dot forward slash that we want to go inside of test folder. And if we wanted to go back up, again, it's just cd space dot dot. That'll bring us back to where we currently were. So the question now remains, what happens if we don't put a dot? And let's try that. So if we just hit cd forward slash test folder, it's going to give us an error. And that's because there's nothing relative to it. The dot is the relative representation to here. And that means that with a dot forward slash, we have a relative path. And on the terminal, when we don't have a relative path, the opposite of that is called an absolute path. That means it's not relative to anything. You're just given the full path directory location on disk. So what is the absolute path directory for test folder? Well, let's CD into it. Then let's run the PWD command again. So note how it actually begins with the forward slash. That is the absolute path on disk from the root directory. It's not relative to anything else. And let's see what that looks like. Let's CD to the root directory by just putting the forward slash and then run LS. And now we're back at that root directory that we saw in the file manager before. So as a little challenge, let's try to walk back down from this current location all the way back to test folder. We can type CD slash home and then Ubuntu. And then we can hit tab to see what our current options are. And then we can go ahead and we can start typing test, followed up with a little bit more tab auto completion, and then we can hit enter. Okay, so let's try reversing that, but also print our working directory along the way to see how it actually happens. We can cd dot dot each time, run a pwd, run another cd dot dot, one more pwd, another cd dot dot, and then another pwd. Finally, we'll be back at the root directory. Now let's do that in one fell swoop and cd back into test folder in the full absolute path directory location, starting from root, home, Ubuntu, then test folder and hit enter. Okay, so with that being said, it can be maybe a bit of a pain to always have to reference things in full path locations like that. And thankfully Linux actually has a shorthand shortcut for that. We can use the tilde command to always bring us back to our home directory. So let's try running that now, and then we'll run a PWD just to see what actually happened. And notice how it brought us to our home folder. 
Now let's do that one more time just to make it hit home. CD back into the root directory just to change where we're at. Run a PWD and let's CD back to our home directory and see how that actually happened in place. Okay, so we actually covered a lot of ground in this lab. We learned how to throw on flags to commands to make them do more things. And we also covered the differences between relative and absolute paths and how to navigate through the directories on the command line. These are pretty important concepts and they're probably still gonna feel a little foreign at first, that's okay. You can double back through the video and identify some concepts if you need to let them hit home a little bit harder. But I recommend don't stay too long on it and keep pressing forward because a lot of these concepts will start to feel natural on their own as you use them. We'll see you in the next one.